Good morning, everyone. We are live. Thank you for joining me once again for a read aloud slash performance. Today, the book I am featuring is I Am the World. Now, I Am the World is one of my more popular books when I speak in schools, particularly because it represents a variety of different cultures from around the world and how they are presented here. Because the fact is our country is made up of people from all over the world who have established roots here. It may be recently or it may have been a while ago. Good morning, Keika, good to see you as always. Um, we're talking about I Am The World. That is the book I'm gonna be doing today. So this is actually gonna be a pretty short reading slash performance because it's one book and it's basically one, or I should say, of course it's one book, it's one long poem. And this is a poem that I perform all the way through uh, whenever I speak in schools. So uh, what I'm gonna be doing though, I'm not gonna talk about anything while I'm reading slash performing the book. I will ask you, the viewer, some questions toward the end to see how well you know the rest of the world. So I'm not going to linger too long waiting for other people to join because I've learned <laughs> that doesn't always happen, which is OK, because like I said, you can always look at this after the fact. And then if you have questions, you can always ask me in the comments. So with that, let's get started with I am the world. Now, I'm not going to show you every single picture because uh, my publisher basically doesn't allow me to do that. It kind of defeats the purpose of buying the book. You know, I want to keep some mystery. So if I skip a few pages, it's OK. Uh, but you'll still hear the whole poem. You just won't see every single page in the book. OK, I am the world. I am strong. I am the spirit of generations gone. I am the blood of emperors. I am the wisdom of queens. I am the heart of warriors. I am the soul of kings. I am the honor in Asia. I am the smile of Irish pride. I am the breeze in islands far and wide. I am the bite in bratwurst. I am the snap in biscotti. I am the tradition in pierogi. I am the fire in wasabi. I am the thread in kente cloth. I am the pleat in Highland kilts. I am the history in Indian gagras. I am a stitch of Chinese silk. I am the rhythm in capoeira. I gotta show that picture, that's one of my favorites. That's my son. I am the rhythm in capoeira. I am the roots in calypso. I am the clickety clack clack of castanets in flamenco. I am hello, jumbo, bonjour, stravo, Namaste, ni hao, hola, buongiorno. I am a fiber in the flag of humanity. I am the world, and the world is me. The end, super short. So Keiko says, I can't do that, it is my own book. Yes, it is my own book. I did the words and the pictures in this case, but the publisher is the person that made the book. So you're right, Keika, I could show every single picture. Um, I'm not completely opposed to that, but the reason that I don't is because I want the flow of the poem to be the big focus and reading a page, stopping, reading another page, stopping, reading another page, stop, and that just slows down the flow. So more than anything, it's important for me for the flow and then for you to see every few pictures or so. So I have a few questions for you. Since Keika, you are here, you'll be the only one to get to actually answer them live. If you are looking at this after the fact, once this video has been archived and recorded, ask your questions in the comments and I will get back to you or answer my, <laughs> answer my questions in the comments and then I'll get back to you, okay? So, are you ready, Keika? We're gonna go. Okay, so the questions that I have for you relate to specific things, okay? So let's start with food. Food is a pretty easy one and it's a good one. Now, when I did this book, the reason that I included food is because food is one of the first ways that we identify with the culture. If you travel outside of our country, the United States, the moment you go any place outside of the United States, they're going to have whatever country you go to, they're going to have their own unique food. And 
plenty of people, immigrants and such that have come here from other places have brought that food. That's what's kind of the idea for the book. So take for instance, sushi. I love sushi, had it last night actually. It was my son's birthday and his favorite thing is sushi. So we got sushi. Sushi's not from here. Sushi's from someplace else, specifically Japan. Uh, so is pasta. Pasta is not from here, it's from someplace else, Italy. Uh, so there's plenty of other foods from around the world that are here that we eat that help contribute to our culture. So my question for you is, where does bratwurst come from? So thank you, Keka. That was my son's birthday. He is now 16. He is a big 16. He's taller than me, actually. And I know it's hard to tell how tall I am here from here, but I am six feet tall. He's two inches taller than me now. And that happened in the time of this quarantine in the last couple of months, instead of being eye to eye with him, I'm looking just up towards him. That's what happens. All right, bratwurst. What country does bratwurst come from? I'm gonna give you a little time to think about it. I'm gonna give you a little time to think about it. Little, little music, little, little music. And are you ready? So where does bratwurst come from? Bratwurst comes from Germany, in case you didn't know. Wow, Keke, you're gonna be tall. Your mom is six feet and your dad is six eight. Wow, good for you. It's good to be tall. <laughs> I love being tall because, you know, when there's a crowd of people and you need to see something, all you gotta do is look up. All right, so bratwurst is from Germany. Let's go to the picture right next to it. And that is a piece of biscotti, or as they would say in the native language, biscot. Where does biscotti come from? I'm gonna give you a little time to think about it. I'm gonna give you a little time to think about it. I'm gonna give you a little time to think about it. Give you a little time to think about it. And are you ready? Biscotti. Biscotti comes from Italy. Italy, yes. Wow, you are 5'4", Keika. Wow, and you're young. I remember you told me your age. That is tall. <laughs> you're going to be tall once you once you hit my age. <laughs> once you hit high school, you're going to be tall. So I hope you take advantage of that height in any way you can. All right, let's go to the next one. The next one relates to clothes, okay? So clothes is another way that we experience a different culture because each uh, culture has different fabrics that may be unique to that particular country, and they get made into the clothes related to the climate. So in other words, if you're in some place like Africa where it's very hot, you mo most likely are not gonna be well wearing wool clothing, which is very hot, as opposed to some place like Ireland where it is more cooler than not, and you would be more likely to wear wool clothing, not only because of the warmth, but also because there's lots of farming and sheep in Ireland, and that's where wool comes from. So uh, let's take a look at the next one. So the next one is kilts. Kilts. Where do kilts come from? Where do kilts come from? Give you a little time to think about it. Give you a little time to think about it. Give you a little time to think about it. Give you a little time to think about it. And stop. Oh, Russia, not quite, Keka, but I'm glad you did take a guess. Some people don't even take a guess. No, uh, kilts do not come from Russia. They come from Scotland, Scotland. That's why it says Highland kilts because there's a area of Scotland called the Scottish Highlands. So that's where kilts come from. But I'm glad you at least tried, Keka. A lot of people don't even want to try because they think they're going to be wrong and so they get scared. All right, the next one is one of my favorite martial arts. It's all right, Keka. Let's see if you can get this one. Okay, this is one of my favorite martial arts. This is my oldest son. This It wasn't his birthday yesterday. It was my oldest son. Uh, this is my oldest son. Uh, this is one of my favorite martial arts, and it is called capoeira. Capoeira. So can you tell me where capoeira comes from? I'm going to give you a little time to think about it. I'm going to give you a little time to think about it. I'm give you a little time to think about it. Now, if you need a hint, you used to do capoeira. Okay, Keka, then you got to tell me where capoeira comes from. I hope you know. I used to do capoeira too, and it's a lot of fun. I still do it occasionally. I don't do it as much as I do some of the other martial arts that I practice, but I um, used to do capoeira pretty frequently. 
So can you tell me where it comes from? Uh, no martial arts. <laughs> so capoeira comes from the continent of South America. And the country is Brazil. Brazil. Yes, Brazil. That's where capoeira comes from. All right. The last one that I'm going to do is a multi-part question. All right. And since we only got Kick involved here, I'm not going to put the whole burden on her to guess. I'm going to give you out there a little bit of time in between. The last one is eight different ways to say hello. One of them is in English. So the question is, what language do the other ways to say hello come from? You were going to say Spain? Mm, not quite, Keka. So now you know it's Brazil. All right. So we have eight different ways to say hello. So let's start with, so obviously hello is from us. That's English. So let's go to the next one, Jumbo. Where does Jumbo come from? Where does Jumbo come from? Do you know? Jumbo comes from Africa. The language is Swahili. Swahili. Now, Swahili is not spoken all throughout Africa. Africa is a large continent. People often think of Africa as a country like us, the United States, when in reality, Africa is a whole continent, meaning it's made up of a bunch of countries. And since it's made up of a bu bunch of countries, they speak different languages in those countries. And Swahili is spoken in uh, Kenya. I'm not sure exactly where else, <laughs> you know, but I know that it's spoken in Kenya. All right, the next one right next to it is bonjour, bonjour. And ah, you got that right. Keka said French for the second one. That is correct, bonjour is French. Now the next one, only two people have ever gotten in all the schools that I've ever spoken to. And the reason they got it is because they were from this country. All right, so the word is stravo, stravo. Where does stravo come from? Now, more than likely, you're not going to get it right, so I'm just going to tell you this one. This one comes from Croatia, Croatia. Now, the reason that I included Croatia, because some people may be like, well, that's a tiny place. I never even heard of it. Well, the reason that I included it is because they were involved in a war years ago, and they were very fierce about holding on to their language and their religion and a lot of things. And so uh, I wanted to include something that represented that, and so I did Stavo. All right, the next one right next to that is a very large and populous country. Namaste, namaste. Where does namaste come from? Where does namaste come from? Now, I do yoga, and when we do yoga, when we finish, we always raise our hands in a prayer hands, put them above our eyes, and we say namaste. That comes from India, India. I see Cake is jumping ahead of me. She got to the next one. That's good, Keke, because I'm glad that you said it. I don't have to tell it until I uh, choose to. So we got namaste. Let's go ni hao, ni hao. Keke got that one. Ni hao is Chinese. Very good. That is how they say uh, hello, ni hao ma. The next one is hola. Hola. Where does hola come from? Hola. That's a very popular one. That is Spanish speaking. That is the language of uh, Spanish. Um, so you will hear Ola in many Latin speaking countries. All right. And the last one, oh, you got your two mixed up, Keka. <laughs> so the last one, Buongiorno, Buongiorno comes from the country of Italy. So Keka had Ola for Italy and Spanish for Buongiorno. So we just flip them. All right. So that's it. So you got to take a quick little tour of the world. You got to get some uh, knowledge on the world. I hope you enjoyed I Am the World, but I Am the World was not the first book with the I Am title. That title, that goes to this book, I Am America, which is which, which is which I will be, which is the book uh, I will be doing on the next performance slash read aloud on Thursday. The seventh. I Am America was the first book that I did before I Am the World. I Am the World basically built on what I created in I Am America. I Am the World celebrates what the world has given to America. I Am America has celebrated what we have given to the world. So I hope to see you here on Thursday to check out this book. And I hope you enjoyed it. I'm so glad you stayed all the way through, Keka. 
He said, wait, I had one more. Nope, that was it. Um, born general was the very last one. Um, there was eight languages. One of them was English. So we really only had to guess seven languages. So that's it, gang. Uh, if you're re-watching this, like I said, if you want to answer any of my questions, uh, pause it when I ask the question, write it down. This way you can see if you got it right. Uh, my girl Keka here got a bunch of them right, but some of the earlier ones she got wrong, but she learned something. And that's the whole point. So I hope you enjoy that. I will see you in a couple of days. And until then, keep reading and enjoy your day. Thank you.